welcome to Bahati Life YouTube channel featuring Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. This is your source for authentic tarot and astrology, magic, and manifestation. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator and the head witch behind Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again, if you're an old friend or family to the YouTube channel. So as you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into uh, evil eye energy. So this doesn't necessarily have to be a person, but this could be any type of negative energies or entities or vibes that are directed towards you at this moment in time of you watching or picking this video and i'm going to see what you can do to protect yourself or shield yourself from this or return it back to the sender if it is actually a person it's interesting because this reading was actually inspired by my dog nova who ran up to me earlier well i was actually working at my desk um just getting ready for the holidays sending out gift cards to everyone and um i started getting this like weird not spooky feeling but like an evil uh, not evil but like a weird feeling in my in the pit of my belly that didn't feel totally good so i was like well let me just take a break let me get up and take a break so i get up from my desk i walk out the door and then nova runs up to me and drops an alligator claw um, a gator claw at my feet and I just knew right away okay we I wanted to protect my energy I wanted to shield my energy and anything that was malicious being sent my way to just send it right back okay so I have the higher wisdom candle burning right here um, in order to help me to not only connect with my own intuition but also to help me channel more information and what you can do and what you can use in order to protect your own energy the three piles that we have here are the obsidian i believe that this crystal is called obsidian it is a little dusty but it's because it's covered in actual powders um that i use to protect my energy and i don't know if you guys know this but i was talking about this um yesterday actually so it's funny that protection is a theme so i as soon as nova dropped the alligator foot at my feet i was just like say less um i already knew you know it was too synchronistic it was too aligned and the way that i feel i always trust my intuition so if you're feeling that too this is pile number one the obsidian the second pile is this black candle which i'm going to burn for those of you guys that want to choose black candle the black candle and then pile number three is this claw foot, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and I'm gonna dive right into your, um, your reading. All right, my loves, if you chose the Obsidian Crystal, this is your reading. Right away, I'm gonna start with the top tarot, which is um, the Horror Tarot, I believe which I felt was very appropriate. So who has evil eye or um, bad juju vibes directing towards those who chose the obsidian? What's the overarching energy? So right away, we do have um, little creep vibes with Knight of Wands. I mean, this, this tarot deck is a little spooky to begin with. That's actually why I got it, but it just goes to show like the energy, like the overarching energy of this person. Okay, Knight of Wands. We have four of pentacles, which is interesting that's in the spider web. We have nine of pentacles and we have three of pentacles reversed. So this is someone or an energy that was wanting to work, wanting you to be available to it. This could be a job. This could be a person or a friend um, who wants something from you. Um, Maybe you're someone who is very self-sufficient and self-standing. Maybe you're someone who's filled with light or maybe you are, they are attracted to something that you have that you hold on to. This is someone who, believe it or not, could actually be a, a close friend um, but or someone coming close into your circle that is envious of something that you have, but it, it's not so clearly defined that it's envious. But you have to understand that evil energy doesn't necessarily have, 
come from a malicious place all the time. Sometimes evil eye energy comes from the, the feelings of jealousy or the feelings of someone wanting something. Maybe, maybe it's your attention. Maybe it's something that you offer. Maybe it's something that you find precious. Maybe it's the fact that you have something that they want. It could be a lifestyle. It could be a car. It could be children. It could be a career, your house, or just the fact that you're a magnetic person. Or maybe they're jealous because you attract a lot of people around you. Like, it could be someone who's close to you and they don't, they just want what you have. All right, so you have to be really careful with evil eye energy. That's why people walk around with the evil eye symbol on their on their body because it's it protects from jealous feelings that just naturally happen and naturally occur. It doesn't mean that that person is trying to intentionally or maliciously attack you, but when you have any type of jealousy or bad or tough feelings or negative feelings directed towards you, that can create a blockage or it can create a curse. If someone speaks about it or if they start, if you're constantly, this is someone that you trust and you're constantly talking to them about your blessing, it can come those evil energies or the the, the feelings of jealousy that they have or the, the feelings of I want what they have or whatever the case is. Um, can do damage over time if you're not cleansing yourself. So basically, what I would do to protect you right now is to listen, is observation, honestly. Listen to your feelings and listen to the energy of the room when you start to share something that you're proud of or when you start to share something that you like. Also, I would, in order to protect yourself, I would start sharing less. I would start sharing less of things on your Instagram, things with your family, um, anything that you really hold and treasure or anything that might be vulnerable right now, maybe share less of that. Maybe don't work so much with this person or share so much of yourself with this person. That's one way to protect yourself with this energy. Yeah, we have um, Swamp Lily here, stagnation and entrenchment. So it's possible that this person could be dealing with their own stagnation. It's possible that they don't have close friends or they don't have they might have stagnation in their love life or stagnation in their career this is like regardless they literally like linger in the in the swamp you know regardless of how much light they try to share it just doesn't feel like it gets reciprocated or that there's anyone to bounce back i don't know why i'm hearing like bounce bounce back with them rabbit tobacco we have optimism glad optimism and gladness there's something about you, I do feel like there's, I'm, I'm, I am getting a sense that there's someone that you know, or you're building a friendship with, or that you have some type of relationship with. Um, it's not like a distant person. Um, it's something that feels very intimate. So your, your light, your optimism, your, your natural, I'm hearing graciousness, like your ability to be gracious, to be kind, to be generous. Um, and even your spiritual journey, and how much you have evolved is triggering um, bad juju in this person or bad energy in this person. Yeah, we have monkey ball here with weight and rigid rigidity. Um, I just, I genuinely, I feel like it's interesting that this is coming through weight and rigidity with you also had the four of pentacles here. So some this could really be suggesting that there's something of value here um but it could also show um someone who is conformed to to life to society um someone who is not being their authentic self at all um in a lot of ways they may come across very kind very generous very nice or optimistic or happy when they see you but ultimately there's something about their lifestyle that they're not living in their truth they're not living their purpose and then they see you doing or have you have what you have, or you have the lifestyle that you have, or the partnerships, or whatever, and they really want that. They feel that they're very stuck and stagnant in their life, but when they do see you, they're excited to see you because there's something that they want to gain from you. I'm really getting a strong sense of, show me your ways. I want to work with you. I want to learn from you. Guide me so that I can have what you have, ultimately. It's one thing to be a teacher, and it's another thing to be um, have a student that is stealing ultimately you know yeah the moon card was here i do get a sense that this is feminine energy in nature um if it's not an actual female this is masculine mask that i would hope that this is a female and not a masculine energy 
masculine showing up as a moon right now feels very backstabbing, very um, almost, I don't want to say violent in nature, but it almost feels like, um, like, I don't know why I'm hearing tales from the crypt, but it's like someone who has a lot of stories that they tell about you and it's quiet, private, secret versus a woman. It's, if this is a woman's energy, I, or feminine energy, I believe that this is more like a secret within herself. Um, more I'm hearing on um, like a secret sabotage so the energy itself is sabotaging the connection or sabotaging um a positive bond here and to pay attention to that pay attention to how you feel when you're on this person and they also they feel like they are lurking a little bit um also there's they're attracted to your light they're attracted to your magnetism they're attracted to what you attract um yeah yeah, so we have the cards here. There's a deeper reason for each of your questions. Seek it. Exactly. Um, honor thyself and then start where you are. This person really honors or really values like how you've come this far or how you've made something out of nothing. They love the fact that you are so ambitious and enthusiastic and so inspired. They You draw awe out of them. Like they when they look at you, they're in awe of your radiant nature there they see the light within you and you may be beautiful on the outside or but you're definitely beautiful on the inside like and you know to each their own with what is beauty but this is what this person feels like you're so radiant on the inside and each one of their literally when they say there's a deeper reason for each of your questions it's literally like a student coming to a teacher I, I really get that vibe so it might be someone who's coming to you to ask you so how do you bead those necklaces like it's not that they're asking you because they're curious at like how well you do it in a way that's just like, damn, I respect you. They honor that. But there's a, a teacher, a student who wants to steal from the teacher. Um, or it just feels like there's like layers to this. You know what I mean? Like layers to those questions. Ask, ask and seek it. Um, if this is someone who is like, so where do you get, where do you get your, this actually happened to me now I'm thinking about it. Um, someone who's very popular Back in the day, we used to be kind of cool. Um, I, I was very open, very open um, to new friends, especially witches and, you know, those, you know, magical practitioners who were like me. And, um, I, you know, they, it was just nice back in the day. It was different, you know, or maybe I was a little bit more naive. They would ask me all the time, um, where just, where do you get your herbs from? Where do you get your essential oils from? And I just remember... I would just get this feeling of like, I really, I'm, I'm a type of person that would share information um, and put, help my friends out. But I remember spirit just being like, nope, 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 no, don't do it. Don't do it. Like it was so strong in my spirit not to share. And I always, I was just like, I don't remember exactly how I responded, um, but it was very like, you know, just as, you know, a, a, a central shop, you know, my mom has a lot of connections in this area and, um, they would always bend over backwards for me to to help me because we just it's a family it's like you know family support out here you know but the same person and then the person was like so when you do this candle like what are you using like and I would share very basic but I wouldn't get I would always be be called by spirit to not share like as much as this person was trying even I also have friends who I do readings with, like reading exchanges with. And this one person in particular, I remember I did a reading for her, like an exchange, that that's what I do as a friend. And this was in Philadelphia. And I remember there was so much dark energy that filled, flooded my apartment at the time. I had a studio apartment and I couldn't even focus. And it was just, she was calling in a lot of dark energies um, and was working with a lot of dark energies. And I'm, I'm respectful of that, but it just was so much. It like filled my apartment and I could barely concentrate on the reading because they kept darting around. And it's funny now that I'm thinking about it, it's funny because they were darting around in the room that I was building my apothecary in. Wow. I just had an epiphany, but anyways, um, that's crazy. Hmm. Wow. Um, but in, back to this reading, guys. Um, 
yeah, I just feel like there's someone scouting here for information or trying to gain from you. And the best thing to do is to just literally shut it down. Don't share information. I don't see it so much as you needing to do anything aggressive um, because it's just it just feels like you're closing the door on um, information so that this person doesn't have access to it or maybe you're not so available to giving to them right now. Yep, broken open. So this person really is enviable of how, guys, it's about to get really loud in here in a second because um, Amazon just rolled up and Nova has a bone and she barks whenever they come. But we have a last, Christ last minute Christmas gift that just is getting delivered. Um, shout out to the bearded men out here because this Amazon delivery guy has a really sick beard and I love that. I like, I like seeing men with beards. Not that I'm like attracted to it, but it's just, okay, wow, I'm so distracted. Hi, thank you. Um, so with broken open here, we have... Um, someone who envies or loves the fact that you are so, um, you're, you're so transformed. Like you honor yourself, you honor your journey, you honor, um, how far you, like they honor how far you've come. There's a lot of spiritual, um, recognition. There's a lot of spiritual respect here. There's a lot of show me your ways, teach me your ways, let me in. So spirit is just saying that. I don't think that there's anything serious that you need to do to in order to protect yourself and your energy right now other than don't allow the person that you're already kind of sensing, don't allow them any further in, okay? So uh, that is your reading. I hope that makes sense. I'm surprised that Nova didn't just bark, but um, shout out to distractions, right? Maybe that's a, a symbol right there. A sign is to distract this person from trying to look in and peek behind that door. Um, this is also giving me the vibes of like, you know, when you have like family come over and you lock like one area of your room off or your house off and they go around looking, trying to peek through the door. Um, it's just like, why, why do all that? Like if it's closed and off limits to you, why are you trying to find new ways to like peek in? It's none of your business. So spirit is essentially saying like, just close the door on the person who's trying to really kind of like get in. All right, guys, I'm going to move on to pile number two. All right, my loves, if you chose the burning black candle, this is your reading. So I'm going to be starting with um, the horror tarot, which is a little dark, but I'm here for it. I, I like the darkness because it genuinely shows like the intention, like real pure intention of someone. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. We have the Nine of Swords reversed. Whose energy do you need to protect yourself from? Who is, I don't know why I'm hearing stalking you or watching you or observing you. Um, I wasn't, the, the, the start of this reading um, or the title of this reading is the energies, you know, like who, who or what do you need to protect yourself from? I don't know why I'm getting like stalker type vibes here or someone who's watching. Okay, nine of swords reversed, justice reversed, interesting, and seven of cups reversed, but it's kind of giving me upright right now. I don't know why I saw it as upright. Interesting. Okay, so this is um, not as positive as, as I would hope it would. Pile number one was a little bit more manageable. This is something where you're going to actually have to, you're going to have to shut this shit down. Um, pardon my French. I'm trying to put my finger on exactly what it is, but maybe that's exactly what it is. Like, number one, I'm getting a sense that it's really important for you to um, ground yourself. Um, even as I'm talking, I, spirit is guiding this group, those who chose this candle, to walk barefoot on the ground and pull themselves into the earth. Um, I'm also getting, uh, cutting a cord. I'm, I'm hearing, you might, you're going to have to do a black cord cutting. That's one way. Spirit is like not even talking about what this energy is. They already want to work on creating the solution. This is where you need to cut a cord from someone. Someone has a vicious attachment to you. And I'm also hearing of a vicious cycle. There's a cycle. This, there's this pattern um with this really in this relationship or in this connection or you have to cut yourself away from i'm also getting a mirroring um spirit is really direct and forward with this reading so i really want you guys to just take this heed this and maybe listen to it twice 
if you chose this pile, I don't think that you should be listening to any other pile, although listening to this message right here. I know some of you guys kind of bounce around um, during the readings, but I, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I don't I don't sugarcoat shit. You guys know that. Um, stay here in this pile. I don't know why Spirit is saying that specifically. Stay here. Don't get, don't, I'm hearing don't hoard messages. Don't hold on to different messages. Um, that could be in this reading, but also I'm seeing this in regular life. Try not to hoard too much spiritual information or hoard different opinions and holding on to them. You have to clear that out. It's bother. It's boggling you. It's boggling the mind. It's creating a lot of energetic chaos. Ground yourself. Okay. So you know what this is? This is a spiritual attack. You might, you gotta, okay, whoa. So if you're someone who, I don't know why I'm getting a vision of an Ouija board. If you're someone who's been working with tarot or the Ouija or calling in spirits or working with spirits, or if you don't close out the circle afterwards, you have a spirit that is lingering here. And you, I see a Bible, I see holy water. So I'm seeing like you're needing to call out for a blessing. Um, this feels very, um, you just, you, it's, it's, it's kind of giving me like a person who doesn't close out, close out the energy after a reading. Like if you're working with a tarot and you don't close a circle out, or if you have a, a, a coven, um, coven, coven, tomato, tomato. Um, I don't see it necessarily as much as that, but maybe you just, you tapped into something. Some of you guys might've actually done a reading for yourself or for others. Not, this is not necessarily pre, um, currently, I, I do get a sense that this is something that, uh, it's like an a, anomaly, like something that happened like during Halloween. Um, and it still kind of lingers to this day. This could be two to three or four or five years back is what it is that I'm hearing. Um, yeah, you just need to close out this circle and cancel, like cross it out. So there's needs to be a full cleansing here. So we're gonna need to do like, holy water or you know prayer like the psalms um um just call on like this the and like an angel of light like actual bright light from from heaven from you know or whatever you believe like this very protective energy to kind of cross this cancel cancel this energy out you might even need to do like an archangel michael thing this isn't anything to be afraid of um because i see that some of you guys it just creates a lot of chaos or like I don't want to say angst in your life, but like, um, like it, it could change your luck for the better. Like it change, it kind of clears out. If you're someone that like all of a sudden you just, life is just, yeah, the guys, this is something from the past. I'm watching the candle wax kind of drip right now. Um, and look, do you see that it's pu pulling upright? So this is spiritual. This is a spiritual attack. Um, hundred percent i stand by what is that i say do you see how this candle wax is moving upright some of you guys will be like oh what's the, the position of your table fine i'm not going to argue with this um with you on that but this table i do a lot of candle magic on it and i watch the flame and i watch where the candle wax pulls and it doesn't always get pulled to the top actually it's very rare so this is a, a psychic um attack here spiritual attack here so basically what you do is you're going to need to also um, protect your crown your crown chakra if i were you i would use i was actually talking about this with a friend not too long ago but i would use like a cotton swab a, a, a flat um cotton swab and i would put frankincense um and myrrh on the top of that along with holy oil and just wrap your head at night um because it also feels like you might have some you might even be experiencing like a lot of nightmares or your nightmares might be troubling um, all of a sudden you, you took a turn from having like normal dreams or regular dreams about everyday life to things that are more tormenty. Um, and it just goes to show that that's when that spiritual attack started happening. Okay. So this might be a witch or someone else who directed energy towards you, but mostly I'm seeing this as someone who just didn't close out the circle when they were doing a ritual during a very vulnerable time. And the first thing that I can think of off the top of my head is like Halloween. All right. So, wow, look at that. Hearts a bustin. So this is a plant and it says the removal of obstacles and catharsis. 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 Um, yeah, and the number eight. It's as above, so below. This is literally, I just feel like this is you've been you've probably been experiencing some some obstacles that are just like supernatural. 
Um, clearing this energy out is going to help clear out some of the chaos um, in your spiritual realms, in your aura. Just kind of give you a fresh start. It's nothing to be afraid of, but it's something to take seriously here. We have here interconnection and synergy. And then we have the passion flower. It's so funny because I was going to say that with the seven of cups. The passion flower, for those of you guys that don't know, I actually have this in my in my garden, but it represents the seven disciples and it's very, very spiritual in nature. Um, it also represents the person who spiritually betrayed Jesus Christ. Um, one of them represents the, the, the person who betrayed um, Jesus Christ. So we need to disconnect you from whatever it is that is spiritually attacking you right now. And you could do that through the things that, as I said, but passion flower is very, very magical. It's an, it's a flower that I use. Um, it also gives fruit. Um, I use it in my garden as well. Okay. Ethereal beauty and shyness. Um, this is something that you attracted. Um, honeysuckle is known for its attraction. Um, it's not the loudest thing, but it's not the loudest attraction, but it is attraction nonetheless. And you might have your energy when you were doing this ritual or doing your tarot or calling on whatever spirit came in and it's kind of been lingering here. So we want to just snap it out. We want to cleanse that out. Okay. Yeah. Oath. Oath is reversed. Um, this is a promise that is that you make a promise that you would want to keep. It's interesting that this is coming up. So I don't know. You might have called on a spirit um, or even a, or an Orisha or a god or a goddess and ask, like, ask them to help you with something and then you didn't do it and you didn't close out and or you didn't close out the circle. So just go ahead and honor that and then write a petition just to be like, okay, thank you so much for your help and, um, you know, I thank you, but it's time to move on, you know. So, okay, you are destined for greatness on the wings of love. Love doesn't have to be near and you have more options than you realize. So this is giving me, again, in the space, in the ethers. You guys might have had some mental fogginess, um, some nightmares, even maybe a blockage in creativity or creative stagnation or... daydreaming, inability to concentrate, um, or maybe just feeling like, you know, you're not totally alone all the time, or you're not totally by yourself all the time. Like there might be something like lingering around. Um, I just feel all you gotta do is just clear it out. Just clear it out. It's possible that birds of a feather. Interesting. So this might've actually come through. I still, I stand by what I'm saying. You might've been with a group or been prompted by the internet or society or whatever to work a spell or work, a mag work magic or work with someone. So that might've brought this in. Um, however, you might, again, it's like you, I keep getting this sense of like something similar to like Halloween where you were shuffling the tarot or working a spell or at your altar at a very spiritually sensitive time. So for me, that can be Halloween, but it also can be a moment where you are manifesting healing for yourself when you are going through sickness or some type of dark stage. So birds of a feather, they flock together, right? So when you go to your altar and you're asking or calling out for healing, and if you're not totally protected, and it happens to the best of us, um, something that is mirroring your energy of illness or discord within your body or dysfunction within the body notices or is attracted to that light. And sometimes that light kind of sits, um, sits around and lingers. So go back to what it was that I said in the very beginning. I stand by what it is that I said, which is getting your feet out in the ground, just kind of pulling those energies out of your body, out of your mind, out of your aura, out of your energy, push them into the ground, just make them stay there. And just command it out of your body. If you want to, you can go with the holy water spirit and um, the energies and just kind of bless yourself, bless the vibes. Um, you could do a full sage, but also close out the circle. Basically what you do is, is you can light a candle, um, a simple candle, which is so funny that you even chose this. Now that I'm thinking about it, but you can light a simple candle, very similar to this one. I would do a white one and I would just say anybody that i was originally working with and this is just me saying this quickly in a nutshell but anything or anyone that i was working with that does not serve my purpose for my highest and greatest good right now you have to go 
if I called on you before in the past and you were helping me or working with me or felt called to help, I thank you for that, but I don't need your help any longer and you have to go. You have to command it out, okay? Um, all right, guys. And just be careful moving forward, okay? Remember to always close out the circle whenever you're done doing a reading, whether for others or for yourself. And that's the other thing too, that you could have been doing a reading for someone else, um, like a friend or something, and their energies or their vibe might have, you know, could have stuck with you. So just be aware of that. All right, we're going to move on to pile number. All right, my loves, if you chose pile number three or this alligator claw that seems to be throwing up gang signs, <laughs> especially after Nova chewed off his middle finger. <laughs> then this is your reading, which probably says, it says a lot. So alligator claws, you use them in, you know, uh, magic in order to protect yourself and also secrecy and privacy and stuff like that. It's, I feel like already this is someone that has bad energy towards you. This is someone who feels right away, they feel slighted by you. They feel not that I just don't get a sense of you owe them something, but I just feel like for whatever reason, they don't like you. Um, this is something that is, I just heard like a battleground. You might've had a fight or a battle with someone or someone's, it could be more than one. This is someone who literally like, if they see you, they might actually give you the middle finger or they just, they, there's not a lot of good energy here. This is someone who doesn't like you. Whether you know them or whether you don't, they don't like you. So this is the first reading that's like really an actual person here um, with malicious intent. Um, this could be a backstabbing friend. Um, you know this person now. You, I, I'm really getting a strong sense that you do know this person. Um, pretty well, or you're not close, someone that you're not close with. I don't know why I want to start off with these cards first, um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Yeah, faith, hope. This person really hopes, uh, it's kind of giving someone that you might not necessarily talk to right now or there's distance between. Either you have hope that you guys will come back together or they do or you both do, but there might have been a falling out. Vulnerability and threat, exactly. This is someone that you, they are very, very vulnerable. Okay, I don't need, oh gosh fine seven eight nine and then we have nine here so the number nine is very significant here in this reading um but this is someone who genuinely does want your friendship or wants to pull towards you or wants to be with you but they're feeling very vulnerable about that and they they they, they definitely see this as a threat but they want to come close to you they want to pull towards you you, I don't know if you guys had a fight or a disagreement or if you stood up for yourself or you just don't you just don't bang with them anymore. Like that's how I say it. But um, it's especially with number nine here and number nine, it's like something that ended um, the friendship or the connection or this vibe. This is someone that you know. Balance and stability. This is you. You probably disconnected from this person because you the connection itself was not balanced. It wasn't stable, it wasn't healthy, it wasn't conducive to you, it wasn't healthy for the long term, and you might have separated from that. I'm also, these energies sometimes are very protective and create boundaries. Um, I have a, you know, plants similar to this in my house, around my house, that protect me as a boundary to shield me from people who don't have the best interests at heart for me, um, and it, because I work from home. And I love my home. My home is everything. So this is something I, I feel that this is a boundary that you put up to protect yourself from a dysfunction that you saw within the relationship or within a person or that it was that person was bringing it out in you. So there's a disconnect and something about this really rubbed this person the wrong way. Um, and it might be more than it's possible. That it might be more than one. understanding interesting um no two flowers are the same yet all are beautiful in their own way there's i'm definitely getting a sense of jealousy here love is never in vain things are about to get really juicy this person really is trying to pull back into your life or is very curious to know who you're hanging out with who you're with now 
what you're doing. They may act like they don't care, but they do care. They want to know. It's, it's interesting that understanding is here because I feel like this is someone who's trying to understand themselves and understand you better, but there's a sense of like curiousness. That's like, I'm trying to understand this person just doesn't there. I don't know why I'm getting a feeling like they might not be as evolved as you or they don't work on. They, there might be conflict in communication where it's like you're explaining yourself to this person and they just don't get it. So like when you do try to talk to them, it turns into a fight. And that's where you're just like, I can't do this because I can't explain to you anything anymore because you're not understanding like you you genuinely are not understanding I don't feel like this is the end of this connection whatever this is or these people you're gonna see them again or see this person again and they also part of it is because they want their they genuinely their 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 desire to connect with you and they think about it pulls them into your conscious consciousness as well like you might be you might be thinking about them too but you don't have a necessary you might be curious too but i don't know if you necessarily have the desire to connect with them in the same way that they might want to connect with you there is something here that's like they're thinking about you and they get ang it's almost like they are getting angry that you're not pursuing them i don't know why i'm getting that too so it's like the more that you don't reach out the more they're like Fuck you. <laughs> Pardon my French, but that's the vibe that it is that I'm getting. Yeah, tender embrace and smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors was reversed, and this is absolutely someone you know. This is someone who really tries or wants to connect with you. As I'm talking, I'm like, Spirit, what do you do? Like, what? what is, what is the ritual? What is the thing? I think... I might need to shuffle on this. I think really what it is is just awareness and seeing someone for who and what they are and why. Um, I'm also getting a strong sense that like you can't change people. You can't force someone to evolve. You can't force someone to see your side. They can't force you to see their side. There's a lot of misunderstanding here and, and incompatibility. Um... I'm also seeing for you, you might, in order, it's interesting because in order for you to protect yourself, you, the best way to protect yourself is to open up a new door. So how do you protect yourself? I've never even thought of this, but this is what spirit is saying is spirit saying the way to protect yourself is manifest new, a new connection or new connections or new ventures or new you know, manifest by putting the energy into yourself. Like, how do you protect yourself? Putting the energy into yourself. Really seeing something or someone for what it is and just being like, I see you. And then opening up a new chapter or just continuing to evolve as you have been doing. I don't think that you're doing anything wrong. Maybe you needed to hear that. Maybe there's that feeling of like, what the fuck? Like, what did I do? You know that you didn't do it, but it's like, why are you so upset, you know? Or you understand why someone's upset, but it's just like, still, why are you still, why does it still linger here? I think actually a banishing candle, um, really banishing, oh, also mirrors, it's return to, that's what it is. You're going to need to do a return to sender and also burn a seven-day banish candle. Um, you and pile number two actually had to do some ritual work here. This is return to sender, a, a, like hexes, like you might even need to wear something like a talisman that reflects energy back to the person because um, they're really trying to connect with you. They're really trying to touch you. And the more that they try, the more that is actually getting into your subconscious, like they, they linger. So this could be an ex, this could be a past partner, this could be a present partner, um, a relationship, a friendship. Or a few people who were like, well, why isn't so-and-so here? It's like there's this feeling of like they, they're mine. They should be here. It's like, I don't, I like you, I love you, or I care about you, but I don't want you in my life. So this energy, it's just like when they hear stuff like that, they get so triggered. You're really triggering something within them that 
is leading them to their own understanding, but I don't think that they have the capacity to really see that within themselves. So they're just like, fuck you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yep, guys, two of cups. I stand by everything that I said, just like I always do. Two of cups. This is someone who literally wants a tender embrace. They want to come back to you. Seven of swords. Nine of wands. Yep. Look at that, dude. Look at the energy. This is giving either an ex-scorned lover or a friend and a circle of friends. This person is ace of pentacles, queen of wands. See? This is someone who thinks they 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 do not have your best interest at heart and that's why i feel like spirits like don't even try to stay in this space and labor in this like i'm hearing labor intensive like the relationship felt labor intensive it was constant i'm almost hearing like it's never enough it's never enough it's never enough so or if this is like a mother or a parent it's like they want and want and want and want and want and it's never enough so spirit is like, how do you protect yourself? You wear, like, you do the return to sender. You do a return to sender spell. You work a banish candle to remove this fucking negative energy and not like a one and done. This is a seven. You want to do a seven day. Burn that shit down. Write the petition. Look at this. Even the seven of pentacles. I'm sorry, the ace of pentacles here. There's a, a cut here where you're disconnecting yourself and your resources of what they want. Like, why do they want, what do they want so bad? Like, now that I'm thinking about it, like, what is it that they want so much? Like, if it's so com conflicting or if you're so bad of a person, why do they want to connect with you so bad if you're so awful or so this? Because they want something. What do they want? Your money? They want your friendship? They think they want you to be their best friend? They want you to be exclusive to them? Like, what is it? It doesn't matter. Spirits, like... After you do the return to sender and you work, put a mirror at your altar, an actual mirror at your altar and write the petition for any energy that is sent your way or any energy that you bring out in another person, send it right back to them and have that banished candle going. And then what do you do after that candle is done? You manifest yourself into a new chapter, into fresh energy. People who when you actually share your space with them, they have good intentions. They actually like you as a person. All right. I'm done here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me once again. I'm going to go sage my space. Thank you to Nova um, for, you know, bringing me this um, little claw foot. And inspiring this reading. Um, thank you guys. Uh, please let me know down in the comments any other pick a card readings that is that you would love to hear, see, or receive from me. I will do my best to acknowledge them. Or if there's magic, I will be happy to share to a certain extent. You guys know I'm very protective of my magic, especially these days. I'll talk to you later. You were Bye. created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Bahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you, You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.